My name is Helen Key. Um, I also work in the user engagement group, as well as Charles and Rebecca as our group leader. Um, so quickly, this afternoon, we're going to talk about OpenMP. You heard everything about MPI, uh, distributed memory programming, and OpenMP is on the shared memory programming. And then you'll hear about OpenMP and MPI and OpenMP. We call them hybrid OpenMP. Then with a little break, then we'll do more hands-on. Then we can pick up anything you have left from the morning to hear, uh, help you for the exercises in Q&A. The reservation ends at 4.30 today. So open and key. Um, a quick reminder also, everyone in person here, please also join the Zoom so you get all full experience of Zoom chat and Q&A on all the things. OpenMP, um, so the, the outline would be a little bit introduction of OpenMP and the directives of OpenMP, the data scope, the runtime library which change and environment variables, and how to use OpenMP, and then hybrid of programming. So what is OpenMP? It is a shared memory programming model. It has its own standard. It started in 1997. There's an architecture review board that has 30 plus members and NERSC or LBL as one of the member. And we um, get together and, and discuss determining what's, what should be included in the standard based on, on whatever the need. And we, uh, I'm on this um, representing NERSC to sort of uh, gather user input. So, so that will be, um, hope, hopefully things get in, being discussed in the architecture as that language committee. And the current version is 5.2, released 9th November, 2021. Um, the next bigger release is November this year and will be 6.0. Um, OpenMP Sense 4.0 has the GPU offloading. And we're not talking about GPU, we're just talking about CPU today, but then the huge uh, GPU offloading concept. So earlier, you, I, I Rebecca mentioned, uh, we actually having a series of uh, monthly OpenMP training series uh, started in May. We talk about CPU and tasking, and then we're having the next session starts in July, not just last year, uh, in, on, on July 8th, session three, but then after that, we'll be having GPU session as well. So you're for, welcome to uh, register for that training series. And if you missed the first two sessions, you can make up by uh, use recordings and exercises. The advantage of OpenMP, so it, you could basically um, add one little bit of prioritization at a time. It's like if we do open uh, MPI, you would have to rewrite your entire code. For an OpenMP, especially on you know um, computational intensive loops, for example, you can add just the so-called something called uh, uh, compiler directives, and it. It can be, you know, in the same source code for serial code or, or the parallel code. And the, with the uh, compiler directives, the compilers, you can choose to either compile to with a flag, special flag, and without the flag, the compilers will just ignore these directives. So it's still working as a serial code using one we call open empty thread. And if you have a special flagging, the compilers will recognize those directives and then it all use multiple threads to do the parallelization work. So your code, it's it's simple to read. It's like uh, the size is also not um, dramat dramatically increased with OpenMP implementation, and the workflow is clear. Um, single source code, I mentioned that, and you could always choose to which whichever loop is most um, in highly computational uh, cost to do the to do the OpenMP prioritization first. It's progressively. Adding to them, um, the programming model has the as we call them the API. The API has three things, three major components. The directives. I'll show you what what does directives mean. A few of the most important directives we'll talk about today. There's some of the li runtime library routines that you can call those. We call them the runtime library routines or APIs in your actual source code. And there's also environment variables that you can set at runtime. You don't need to change your source code. It just set it in a runtime and you run it with the changes that you set in the environment variables, such as number of threads, different schedules, stuff, etc. 
And uh, those APIs has three, basically we call the three categories of APIs. And there's a uh, uh, parallelization, uh, a flow control, uh, parallelization, tasking, etc. And then there's also the communication. Uh, unlike MPI, you have to send messages or variables explicitly through MPI calls, MPI send, MPI receive, etc. For OpenMP, it's by these threads share at the same memory location, and then you one thread up update in that memory location, the other other thread just gets it. Um, so there's communication things, but data sharing and public and private share, etc. We'll talk about these as well. And then synchronization. Um, you don't want to do multiple threads writing the same location simultaneously, then would be overwritten. So you needed to some coordination. So we, we showed this in MPI critical, that there are similar things in, in opening P side, the critical as well. Um, parallelism, it's a shared memory thread based parallelism. What it does is say one primary thread starts the program and then you um, launch into a parallel region. In the parallel region, then the primary thread will fork a team of threads. Then these threads will do, down, do the work Distributively, I mean, distributively distribute your workload, but running parallel. And then when the parallel region is, is finished, it's called a join. And then uh, other one after that, and uh, then another period of time, there's only one thread is running again. And then you can fork another parallel region. You can also fork nested parallel region. We would, for example, here you can, uh, this is a team of threads working, and one of the threads can fork another. Uh, team of threads, so it's nested pair region as well. So the, the model is called fork join model. OpenMP directives, and Rebecca put this in a nice picture. Prime directive in the Star Trek <laughs> directives. Um, so we talk about syntax, and this is a quick overview of the topics we'll cover. Um, it just goes through it. The format, the, let's talk about C, C++, and then we'll talk about 4chan. So in C++, C++ is we use Pragma ONP, and then this is this is like in front of a parallel region, for example, we call them directives. And then there's a directive name, and it will show you a few of them, like when it's a parallel, when it's a tasking, etc. And then there's a clause. <clears throat> the clause is sort of optional. Some of the directives do not have a clause, some of them do, and then the clause has can, can have even more um, additions to them to, to uh, even more, giving more detailed hint for directives. And then they, with this Pragma OMP in C++, always followed by a new line. And Pragma means saying get down in, in Greek. It is the case sensitive for C++, C++. it's not for Fortran. Um, and then those directives actually followed standard rules for C++ C++ compiler, standard line, standard com, um, standards. There's a like a scope of directive. And then so you have this directive, what how, how much this directive applies to is denoted by uh, curly braces, uh, a region. And then you put uh, curly, curly braces, the next line, starting from the next line, and then you end with another curly braces. If there's a single line, you do not need to use curly braces. If there's too long a line, you can continue it by um, escape, escaping the new line character. The Fortran, um, it's the way it does is Centennial instead of program OMP, but Centennial. There's three types, uh, three types of Centennial, but I think from now on we should probably focus on just the first one, which is for the Fortran 90. The other two works for Fortran 77, the earlier version. So more and more people are using Fortran 90, which is free form code. So this is like do dollar pound OMP, and then directive name and clause, very similar to what we have shown in C and C. I'm going to um, skip the fixed book form code, which um, uses the other two centennials. Uh, the free form code is dollar pound OMP directive, as I mentioned. And the centennial, because it's free form, it can be in any column, doesn't need to be on uh, first column anymore. And then if there's um, um, too long, you can also use the continuation line. We use an ampersand at the end of the line of the directive, and then followed by the next line with the start with centennial again. <clears throat> and in, in, in Fortran, um, different from the C, C plus, the, the, you have the curly braces pair. In Fortran, I'll see you in the next, in the syntax line, we actually will show you there's a, uh, you have to say start, it, start um, directive and then end this um, directive, centennial. So I think I'll show you in the OMP parallel section. 
here. Um, so here, pragma OMP parallel, this is CNC++. Prime, uh, sorry, parallel is one of the directives. And then you follow by clauses. Private is a clause, shared is a clause. I'll tell you what those mean later. And then you have a curly braces, a section of parallel. It can be a loop or maybe something else. <clears throat> uh, in, in Fortran, you, like I said, follow pound OMP parallel. And then very similar, but you have to, instead of curly braces, you have to have another and, and parallel uh, centennial. And similar, similarly with uh, the clauses. Quick first um, example code with OpenMP. So if you look at this, you, you see basically it's very, very similar to a sequential code. You have uh, include standard io.h and a main, int main, and a printf, hello world from threads. Um, just ignore this line. Yet, from OMP line and curly braces, you will say something about something. Although this is a function actually uh, a runtime library called within OpenMP. But say if something else, just um, you know, print printf and then printf return, that's it, right? So to to do this in an OpenMP way, you want this something in, in this region to be parallelized. What you need to do is, first of all, you need to include OMP.h so that these functions, these um, API uh, be recognized. Then you have the prime OMP parallel. Then with this, the this region will be run in with multiple threads. This is not a loop. So what it does is each thread will run exactly the same um, thing, the same function. Although the OMP gets thread down is a function call, it will actually return a different thread number for each thread that calls it in this example. So if you run this one, you'll say hello world from thread zero or thread, hello world from thread two, for example, you run and like more than two threads. Although actually if we, it, it returns thread number two means it runs at least three because the total number of threads is, um, starts from zero all the way to number of threads minus one. And then, then the curly burst ends, then I mean sequential now. The primary threads are print the slide one line only. In here, you, you see multiple lines from each thread. Uh, very similar for return code. You see dollar pound on P parallel, blah, blah, blah. And then on P and parallel. The modern Fortran um, 90 pro, pro compilers, uh, you can add a thing called use on P or you don't have to have it. Uh, the compiler, when, when you actually compile with the compiler flag, flag it all don't, it all recognize on um, APIs. In the past, you have to um, add use on P. This is a simple output when you run the CEO for trend. Um, so you run it first time, you see actually, oh, I'm good. I'm hello world from hello world from threads zero, one, two, three, four, five, and now I'm sequential now. But then you run it exactly the same and out, out again, it might come out with different order. The reason is since these threads are running parallel, the order of how they run is controlled by the operating system. So there's no guarantee it'll run in order. If you really want to run in order and you put it in sort of uh, like a, a, a synchronization thing, make it critical, make it, you know, uh, ordered. There's actually a, 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 a cost called ordered. Then they're ordered, but it all cost you. There's a much bigger overhead. Basically, make it, make, try to run it in, in sequential again. So just keep in mind, uh, output from open MP threads is not in order, usually. And this is expected. Okay, now I'll talk about some of the directives. The first, like mostly commonly used directive is called work sharing loop. Work sharing loop is like in C, C++ is a for loop. And in Fortran it's a do loop. And a for loop, the way to do it, pragma OMP for, right? And then there's a for loop right here. And here are some other extra um, clauses. We'll talk about these clauses a little bit later. Uh, in Fortran, the OMP do, and you have to do an OMP and do. Um, I didn't talk about no weight. Uh, no weight can be added to the optional um, work sharing loop uh, parallelism, meaning um, after each of the, each of the will do this loop, and after that, it's you don't need to wait for everybody to finish. Then the the the, the thread finish sooner can go on with the next um, command. 
So here, um, if we foresee the no weight is added here uh, before the curly, curly braces, before trend, you add, you add no weight at end line of end do. So the do loop meaning, so if you have a loop, say you have iterations from one to a thousand, and you have, say, four um, threads to do that, the do loop will distribute the iterations and each loop, each thread will take a portion of it. And the way to do those how to um, divide the workload is by the type. So the class type here, meaning uh, different types, static, dynamic, and we have a table to show you what each of those mean. Uh, static, first of all, let's double. So static is basically uh, meaning at the, the division of the iteration loop is determined at the compile times. So it takes a little bit longer to at the compile, maybe say, and I know if I'm thread zero, I'm gonna do which part of this iteration and so on. Then at the runtime, it's really quick. It's fixed. Um, the way you can do static, if you do nothing, uh, there's like, remember I showed the static and chunk. If without the chunk optional keyword, if you have how many threads, it divides equally by how many. And the last thread may take a little bit more or less depending on the implementation. If you have a chunk, it all divide by the size of the chunk. So it's a 10,000 here and then the four threads. But if a chunk of 100, that'll be 100, 100, 100. These chunks, and then the first thread will take first chunk, second will take second chunk. And if all the threads are used up, the next thread will take the next chunk. But it's still everything is decided at the compile time. On dynamic is, it still has a chunk, it still has um, a, a chunk size, but the way that it does is, um, depending on the runtime, so, so it still distributes the, the whole iteration as the chunk, different chunks. But then the first thread comes in, takes the first chunk, second thread comes in, takes the second chunk. If one of the threads finish sooner, it attacks the next chunk. So that is why it's called dynamic, it's determined at the runtime. So this is usually helps. Uh, so if you have you know, some workload that, that each thread may take different time, like I say one thread does n square or whatever. So, then it really helps with uh, diamond, we call them a load balancing. With the static uh, scheduling, if one thread takes so much longer than the other one, it becomes the like starting point of finishing the whole program. So dynamic helps with you, especially specify a little bit smaller chunk, and then your workload will be very nicely um, load balanced. But it did extra um, overhead at runtime because the operating system needs to manage which one is finished, which one takes next, chunk, et cetera. And there's a little bit more other options. There's guided, there's runtime. Guided is sort of a, a combination of static and dynamic. It, it has the chunk size, and but um, as the as time goes on, the chunk becomes smaller and smaller. And then also the, whoever finishes takes the next chunk. So it's a, a combination. It's not, ev not every um, compiler has this guided implementation. And runtime is, uh, even more uh, variability, it's varied by different uh, compilers. We call them compiler implementation of the OpenMP specific standard. So which loops are parallelizable, which loops are not, even though you have a loop, um, but not necessarily everything can be parallelized. So if say my I plus one iteration depends on I, the iteration I results, I cannot parallelize. Parallelizing meaning, each thread can pick some an iteration and do it in run out of order. But if the iteration results of I plus one depends on the previous steps, then you cannot do them um, in parallel. That means you cannot, that means um, there are the data dependencies so that you cannot parallelize them. Uh, sometimes you can do a little trick by you know, change your uh, things. Say, say sometimes, sometimes they do like the iteration I equals I plus two or something. Maybe you can change it to I equals I time times four two, then each one of them will become independent. There are some tricks, but not still not always. Not everything can be parallelized. So for example, the conditional loops. So you say why or something uh, a condition is met, then I do the next step or I exit this. But then before the runtime, you don't know when was that uh, loop being conditional loop being satisfied. Sometimes you actually doing an error accumulation and then you have error threshold. So you do lots and lots of iterations and then when the threshold is met, you can exit. So those, those things cannot be parallelizable. And there's also like C++ um, standard iterator loops. It cannot be parallelized. 
and then with things about data dependence, things like that. For for some of the conditional loops, there's actually an open API tasking. We're not touching about this today, but there's a more than um, just the regular loops that I can use open API with. Then there's a little trick. If you cannot run the loop backwards, it's it's a necessity condition, not a sufficient condition. It, it's a, like more likely it's parallelizable. <laughs> So if you do i equals i at one to n, and then you could do if i n equals i equals n dot one and step is minus one to see if it generates the same results to, to as a as a single simple check. So here's an example code here, uh, Gaussian elimination. Do you know what is Gaussian elimination? Sort of uh, in a linear algebra, you have like a say a uh, an uh, X A equals B X, but the way is that you have say so you have three um, unknowns X Y and Z, and the linear algebra has like three X plus two Y plus two Z equals ten, five X plus minus two two Y plus. So the way to do this is you do a pivoting that you starting from I equals zero to N minus one, and so 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 they have, first of all they have like there's a coefficient we we have can put all these coefficients in the a matrix. Like, so you have a matrix and it can show you this matrix um here, n times n, and then from i, the yellow things are in the, the i dimension. And you're starting from i to towards n minus one. Then here, the, the green things are then internally, you have j and, and k loop. What it does is try to um, times, let's say from all the way from the, the j loop here, <clears throat> either way, we could we could say this vertical is j loop, right? j loop here, the way you want it is to make every one of these become zero by timing some coefficient of the, the J equation, the second equation all the way to the N minus one equation, and then do the subtraction from the first equation and you make them zero. Similarly, you do the same for K, and then the, all everything of these become zero, you basically reduce your unknown into N minus one unknown, and then you do the similar thing again and again all the way. And then until the last, you will solve the first dimension of an unknown, uh, then, you go back to the, put that thing into the previous matrix, and then you have a smaller un equation, of, uh, how does it, a set of n minus one equations, and then go all, uh, another way backwards, you get n minus two n, um, equations. So here, <clears throat> the way that when, from I dimension um, progression, actually each one of them is dependent of I equals zero finish, then you can do the n, I minus m. Uh, I equals one, then you have to keep, you, here is I, I equals zero finished, then you do I equals one, then you do I equals two. But then once I is fixed for J and K, try to make each one of those become zero, doesn't matter. You can do each one of the equations now in out of order. So we go back to see this equation here. The I loop is, um, is dependent that, <clears throat> The, you have to in, do them in order, but the J and K are um, no data to handle, which means they, we can parallelize it. So the question is, if we know that J and K can be parallelized, where should we put the OMP pragma in here? Anyone know? Uh, so you have, a, you have a big loop, right? You would say, oh, I wanna try to do parallelize this. Can I put pragma OMP right here? You can't, right? Because we just talk about this, this data dependence. But can I put in between the first I and INTJ for put program OMP right here, parallelize J loop? Yes, we can. And so we got we put we can put here, right? Um uh, we, we could also tell you this uh, another trick. We would we would also ask, can I put in, in front of here K instead of J? So what is the pro and, and con? Between parallelized K or parallelized the J loop, what, what what do you think is better? So, because I'll tell you the answer, J loop is better. <laughs> Outer loop is better because uh, for each of the O and P parallel region, you have actually a fork and join to do. Right, there's an overhead. So if you do it in here in front of K, you will have to fork and join, fork and join multiple times for each J. But for here, uh, for the J, you just do it one time for each J only, and, and I is fixed. 
So uh, another consideration usually is say, depending on the size, in this case, J and K loop size are the same. Sometimes if the J loop is much smaller than the K loop, you would think I would actually want to do parallelize the K loop. So the way to do that is you can do actually a, a loop exchange. The K and J actually, you can totally exchange them, right? Put J, K outside and parallelize K. K loop is much bigger. That's one way to do it. Another way, another way to do it, actually, you can make both of them as parallelized. So what do you do is put a collapse parenthesis two there. Then it means the compiler will actually take J and K loop and make them actually one dimensional loop internally and then parallelize them. So you have a much bigger iteration space to parallelize and the collapse to two does that for you um, automatically. Okay, um, any questions so far? The next topic is about synchronization. So we sometimes we need to make sure the space threat execution in order. And what we do is a few of them, critical, barrier, single, um, let's talk about each one. Critical meaning um, within this critical region, for C there's a curly braces in between, uh, single line doesn't need curly braces, but there's a, 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 a section that you want them to run one at a time. Critical can ensure that one at a time. There's no order, but only one can come in. Whichever comes in, then all the other threads have to wait. And for Fortran, you have a you know, critical and then end critical, everything in between, is one at a time. And you can give the critical sections a name. In the whole, your region, your whole code region, the critical with the same name, they, even if you have the critical here, another critical with the same name there, then both regions can only have one code, one thread running at a time. But if you have a different name, then critical name one can be parallel with critical name two, a different thread can run in different critical regions. Single as similar to critical, or not, let's not say similar. <laughs> critical meaning every thread has to go in once, but then everyone has to run it and, and then at the end of critical, then, then the code can go on with the next step. Single meaning it, it will run, but it needs to run it and doesn't matter which thread. Whoever just goes in, run, finish it, and then the other thread doesn't wait. So one thread was in the single region, does something, the other thread, Okay, someone else is doing it, I don't need to do it, and I can go on, there's no way. So usually you do know, some of the kind of IO, you need only one IO output. So and whichever thread prints something for you is enough, then single is usually um, a good a choice. Barrier is just, just one single line at all, nothing um, curly braces reading at all. So basically mean every thread comes here, wait, and then everyone reaches it, go on for the next step. Okay. Synchronization. So another big one is called reduction. What is it's just really useful. Just think of um a work case. So say I have uh, usually we call them the tree algorithm. So I have a say a big iteration space, and for each iteration space, I can do some local work. For example, I find out the summation of my local iteration thing. And my other thread does the summation of the, the next session. Then I want the overall output of the whole global summation, right? So usually you would think maybe this is not parallelizable because uh, each thread do, does something add to the summation and the other thread does something add to the summation. If they write the same, write this output to the same, at the same time to the same memory location of this global summation, it'll be, um, we call them data rays or data, basically data writing to the same memory location at the same time by different thread is a um, overwritten of memory, it's a, it's a data race, and then you will get undetermined output. But the reduction basically is, is an open MP implementation. The, the runtime will do this more uh, carefully or strategically that, that the programmers doesn't need to worry about how this is done underneath. Then uh, with this reduction um, clause, and you give it uh, the, the operation in the, the example I gave is the operation is the summation sum and the column, the list is the variable. So you have a local variable, whatever. And then with this thing, 
and then you have the a, a, a parallel uh, loop, and you do your similar parallelization, um, par OMP do right the, the distribution with a reduction, and then the each of the local summation whatever thing will be completed, and the final uh, output will be done by the reduction clause. And there's lots of things um, supported for the operations. This up up summation is up, uh, and for summation of Fortran or C plus plus is also plus. Minus is being uh, deprecated because it kind of doesn't does not make sense. <laughs> uh, there's a base basically to with a base of each operations like uh, summation base operation is zero for each of the local thread, and then you add them together. For the for the multiplication, the base will be one. Then each like say like my initial thing of this list in my local um, thread uh, is is one, and then I get lots of lots of local multiplications, and then I get my other thread, the local multiplication, the final result will be all the things multiplied together. That's why the base is one, not zero for multiplication, et cetera. There's also lots of logical operations can be done as well. Um, so we, I think we have an example of the reduction code later on. Um, so modern, I told, told you about OMP um, parallel do, parallel OMP four, so usually I, I should show you this example here. Um, um, the parallel OMP parallel, you create a uh, multiple thread. And the next thing is OMP uh, uh, program OMP for a uh, for loop. You can put them two in the same line, uh, program OMP parallel four, and then the loop. The the put them the same line is just and uh, purely just a simple simplification of the code. It actually still means a parallel region followed by a workshare loop. <clears throat> then this um then we have a, a simpler OMP. Uh, we call them loop. The directive is just called loop. The loop is uh, openmp 50 comes from openmp 50 standard. Now you don't need to tell them how uh, my schedule should be on the CPU side. On the GPU side, there's even more things that that you don't need to specify anymore. There was something about teens and some all the other things in the GPU side that was more block clauses. If you just say OMP loop, meaning the compiler will do it for you, find out whichever is the best, best optimization it will give you, and then do it, does its own scheduler, does it and other things. But that looks very, very similar to what we have shown here, program OMP do or for, uh, program OMP power um, do. Uh, so this is like, a simplified and a newer thing. And in, in the exercise today, you will see an implementation of OMP loop and you will see an implementation solution or open a, a work sharing loop. So instead of OMP do, now you just say loop, something like that. Very similar, no wait. Um, on the GPU side, usually you have something called OMP, target team is distribute, uh, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and with that, you would say OMP target loop, much simpler. CPU side, you don't see much simpler than that, but underneath, it's a different concept. Um, in the work journal loop, we call them pres prescription, pres prescription um, implementation. Like the, the programmer tells OpenMP what I want explicitly. The OMP loop is called descriptive model. You just say, I wanted you to parallelize for me and that the compiler does it for you. Good. Anyway, um, scope, how much in time? So what does scope mean? Um, when you talk about the, the, the things that be shared by multiple threads, um, so you show some of the examples earlier, you show them shared, you show them uh, private, those are things to explain the scope of these variables. So in a parallel region, obviously things can be shared, things can be, uh, par um, for example, loop index, right? I equals one to 10. And then um, in the parallel region, you definitely want different threads working on different index. So those index definitely need to be private. Um, OpenMP does this uh, loop index as private for you by default. But there are other things, um, a big memory location, they say big mem um, matrix. And each thread maybe just only need to update a, a subarray of that matrix. And then the whole matrix can be shared. 
as long as the each thread knows where um, the the global shared memory is, and and they know where is the sub direct sub uh, location that the each thread is updating with, so the those things can be shared. <clears throat> Okay. When it's private, each thread will make its own copy. And then those private variables only exist within the parallel region. When you exit the parallel region, those private thread uh, variables are gone and you cannot access them anymore. Private variables are known to each own thread only. So within the um, OpenMP memory model, there's like big global shared uh, memory. That's why uh, OpenMP usually is on the shared memory programming. So, so for like a big machine, you have lots of lots of nodes, and within each node, usually memory is shared. But across each node, the memory is not shared. It's, you you cannot do open MP programming across node. That's where MPI kicks in to do distributed mem uh, memory that you have to share, uh, shared memory explicitly within a node. It's called shared memory a node. Then there's a bigger. Uh, shared memory pool that um, each thread can have access to these memory, shared memory. But also, each thread has a local memory pool that their private memory is located, private uh, variables located. So I mentioned index of the parallel region loop is private by default, and the local variables you, you declare within the parallel region, they are also private. Um, so here, this, this is um, the most common source of errors if you do the wrong variable scope. I um, can show you some examples later. Uh, so the shared, with the way to do it, you do the shared and put the list, list meaning the variable names. You have A, B, whatever, um, the variable names, and you put them with a comma separated. And private, some of them. Um, there are two special things for private. Is first private and last private. So you have a loop coming up, and then before that, we call them the original variable as uh, as known by the primary uh, thread. If you want this variable to be carried on into the loop, even though each thread may have its private copy with with a uh, with a initial value, you can do first private with this variable, and it carries on this value. And similarly, last private is the after the parallel region is done, and this value you want to come out, be carried out to the outside of the region, and the last private basically remembers the the value of the last um, iteration of that um, the space the loop right i equals one to n the the nth iteration uh, the value out of that and nth iteration if you put it into the list. Um, here, last private, that, that value will get value from the last iteration of the loop. Um, mistakes here, um, basically race conditions. So if a, a private variable is supposed to be carried, but you did not, you forgot to, to declare it, then uh, multiple threads will write to the same location because they become, by, they become shared by default. And then this is it's basically called a uh, race condition. Or if you run it multiple times, you will see why my answer is always different because there's a race condition in it sometimes. The way to do it is you have to explicitly declare all variable scope. Um, it is like, you can say default parentheses is shared, the default parentheses is private, and then then you anything not shared or anything not private in the default, you have to declare it. The other way to do it is to actually, we recommend it to the default parentheses is none no default of everything, then you have to explicitly declare uh, private or shared for all your variables. And if you forget to do one variable, a compiler will tell you, 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 you forgot because you said default now, meaning you have to declare everything. So this is actually better to the first time you write a code. If you don't do that by default is shared and you forgot to do it, it becomes shared, right? And there's some like, uh, tools to help you to scope. And there's a review tool. There's a um, review tool is one of the great compilers uh, tool, or performance tool. And Cody is another company. The, these, these companies, these tools basically can say, I give them a, a program and they'll to figure out the scope and then give you a suggested list of 
parallelization with OpenMP directives and with along with the scope. Sometimes a complex code is really hard to, to do it on scopes by yourself. So here is an example. Back to this um, Gaussian elimination, we already added OMP parallel four for the J loop. Uh, so obviously J is private, so it's okay. But do you can you take a look at it to see if there are any other um, mistakes? Because we didn't do anything about private or shared here. Are there any private things or variables should be declared private? Are there any other errors? Can you, anybody identify anything here? Yeah. What about ratio? Should ratio be public or private? Oh, shared or private by different threads? That's somebody online who says private. Good. Yeah. Because uh, here for the J loop, uh, multiple threads are working on section of this each loop. And then write to the ratio at the same time. So each copy of the ratio with different threads should be private so that they won't be overwritten, right? So here, private ratio should be private. There's also this loop uh, K. Now, for each J, they would be working on different section of K. So they should, my thread zero should know my own my K, which where 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 is the K progressing at this moment? And then other threads work on its own section, others might be on a different K. So this K should be private as well. If we do a collapse here too, then K is okay because it'll be part of uh, the bigger loop. So at least the ratio and K should be private. What about I? Should I be shared or private? Yeah, someone says ratio is private. What about I? Shouldn't be shared. I is okay to be shared. I is outside of the, yeah, it's by default. So uh, the, the, the variable declared outside of the parallel region is shared. And then I is not changing within the, the J loop, right? So I is okay to be shared. So then it basically says K and ratio are shared by default, but um, depending on the compiler, K may be optimized. The compiler may do something magic, or if we do a class two, K is okay. But ratio is never okay. Ratio has to be declared specifically as private. So you're putting J, K, and ratio. J is default um, by as private already, but it's still good, especially if you put default none here. You have to, you have to scope and in everything, including I, everything used in this region, I, A, B, N. So those are shared. J, K, and ratio are private with the default now. Now it's correct. Okay. So default now is a recommended um, programming practice. Okay. Runtime libraries, margin variables. There's a few things, um, like when you know you have a team of threads, you would like to know how many total threads there are and what thread number I am. So set num, let's, let's talk about get num threads first. Get num threads meaning how many total you get. So you may have a few ways of setting number of threads, but you still need to verify because um, the runtime may give you um, a number of threads smaller than what you asked for. Usually, uh, usually you get whatever reasonable, right? But sometimes there's OS with limitations. There's total max number of threads available. There's also uh, shared nodes that the, the admins can set, whichever user can have maximum how many you can get. So always, when you when you uh, ask for how many, you always do uh, get number thread to verify how many you get. And then OMP get thread down is the the rank of the thread I have. It starts from zero, even it's Fortran. Fortran and C both starts from thread zero to number threads minus one. 
Um, the set num thread is one of the other um, API. You actually call it in a serial region, the set number of threads. And then the next pair region will use the number of threads you set. You know. um, to get num threads and get thread num, you call them from within a pair region. There's another uh, set of variables, so sort of um, OMP schedule and OMP number threads. So we showed you OMP set num threads is a runtime API. OMP num threads, the thing is actually a runtime environment variable, which means that um, if you want to use a different number of uh, threads, um, you can use the same source code, compile it, and at the runtime, you set, set in, in a bash, you would say export on OMP num threads equals something, and around the same um, executable, it will use this number of threads. And you change it to a different number, run the same code, it'll use different number of threads. That's that's why it's called runtime environment variables. And similarly, there's OMP schedule. We showed you the OMP schedule, the schedule in as a clause, like schedule static, stack schedule dynamic. You can also do an OMP environment variable way to set your schedule. But then you would ask which one would be tech presidents, right? Like if I set OMP. <coughs> Number of threads are in my code. If I do number of threads, number of threads also has a clause actually, similar to schedule. So you have the pragma OMP parallel and then num threads with a number. So I'll show you there's a, a few. Using OMP number of threads as an example, there are multiple ways to do this. The last way is do nothing. I just let it be and I run my code. It'll be actually determined by the runtime. Um, in, um, implementation, your compiler, your OS, whatever, you don't know. But then there's three other ways. One is this, the clause, OMP parallel, num thread, a number. And you can do um, a set number of threads before the next OMP parallel region, or you could export at the runtime environment variable. So the way it takes precedence is if you have one um, num threads, it takes, it, it'll ignore everything else you set. And if you don't have one, then you have one set number of threads. It takes precedence of the other two. And then if you don't have either one or two, you have one number of threads at runtime versus what we take, what we used. And then those, that's um, uh, and similar to other the, the schedule or whatever other ways. Um, we don't have an OMP set schedule clause yet. It's, it's likely to be in, <laughs> included in the next specification, but at least not in any of the implementations yet. But then um, the set um, schedule and OMP schedule uh, are available. Uh, quickly using OpenMP. So now you have the, the OpenMP as a directive in your source code. How do I get it to run with multiple threads? The way you, you know, compile it uh, using different compile flags. First of all, if you don't use any compiler flags, um, then it's, it's, it'll be compiled as a sequential code, your um, OpenMP directive will be ignored. But what if I have the, the code? In my code, I have like, I call some routines as part of runtime routines. I, what Can I use like if def, if, if, well, if I want to use OpenMP, I would, I would do this. If not, this will, you can do that. There's a macro defined the underscore one one MP, and then let's let's show you this example. So, so basically, if when you compile uh, with open MP flag, then you meaning that underscore open MP is defined. Your source code can say something like this: If open MP is defined, I'll include open MP dot H. Else, that when open MP if dot H is included, actually open MP gets run number. The API is defined. But what if in this else meaning I don't have OpenMP, but I still want to use OpenMP gets right now in my source code everywhere without, without the section of those uh, pragma. You can do that. Now you can actually, I'm just say, customize it. I say, well, even though this is not part of OpenMP.h, I do not have OpenMP.h in my else direction. I can just I want the last line, next line to be comp 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 compilable, then I can do something, I just name it, I can define it as zero. So with and without OpenMP, the source code will be compiled correctly. 
But if you don't use OMP as red number in your sequential code anywhere, you don't need to make, make yourself so complicated. You just um, just regularly include OMP dot H, and if you compile with stuff that uh, open MP flags, it'll be included. That'll be good. If you don't, things. If you don't, um, it's not included, and then the, or any of these other function. If you don't call any of the OpenMP API in your serial code, no need to worry about this. The to compile the OpenMP code with the directive being recognized. Um, for example, on the parameter, we use G, G, GCC or GNU compiler as default. The flag is dash f OpenMP. In the GitHub, you you see those uh, make file or the in the in the make file example or in the batch script, you will see the stash of f of mp we already included for you. If you use some other compilers, maybe you have used PGI and video, the compiler flag stash f mp. The Cray used to be a different one. Now it's they standardized it. It also use stash f open mp. Uh, Intel use stash q open mp, the flags. Um, now to run it, there are a few of the other things besides open genome threads. Um, I think we, we don't talk about this, but <laughs> these are good for something we call thread affinity, meaning you have so many cores, so many process CPUs on each other node. You want them not like multiple threads using the same core. You want them and access more, uh, more memory as possible, uh, even if distributed, et cetera. So these are the recommended to other OpenMP. We call them affinity options that we always recommend you set that anyway. And don't need to worry about it. And as long as you know how many threads you need and also the MPI things, how many MPI tasks I want on each node. Um, on each node, you can use up to however many actual cores you have for MPI or for OpenMP. But usually for your application, it might be, you know, uh, there's a, something called sweet spot. So say for, uh, Parameter CPU node, there are 128 uh, physical cores. You could use, and each physical core has two, we call um, hyper threads. So then the whole thing has 256 um, cores. These are, we call them logical cores. Now everything is sort of logical cores up to 256. So you could run, say, up to 256 MPI, pure MPI. Or you could do up to 256 pure open MP threads on each node. But then you can also run, say, eight, in this example, it's eight MPI tasks and 64 open MP threads per MPI task. So you could try all different combinations and then see which one applies to your application. But then the, the command to run it, um, we use learn batch scheduler, and then within that, you use the srun command, and then um, the dash dash CPU bind equals cost, always put it in, and there's a number of threads, a number of MPI tasks. When you know this number, you will figure out how many logical cores per MPI tasks to give it to each MPI task. So it's probably hard to figure this out. The way to simplify it, go to the script generator, then put number of threads, put how many nodes you want, and it'll, it'll spit out this line for you. And it'll even give you these things. And if you tell them how many threads you need, it'll tell you these other two um, settings as well from the script generator. This is my last slide. Uh, uh, the interlude meaning depends on exercise time. <laughs> and computing pi with OpenMP. So you have done you have done MPI regular, then and receive, you have done MPI with collectives. So now we, this exercise is OpenMP. Just open MP, the the directive, um, the class that and the synchronization that we have just uh, introduced. Again, you have this um, code copied over to the C code or Fortran code, and how do we do shared memory? How do we not um, getting into the data race condition? Should we use no critical? Should we use reduction? Should we just parallelize it? And can we use work sharing for uh, for loop, can we use OMP loop? So the, the answer is in the GitHub, but try not to look at it first. <laughs> That's the time is it to be. You can save the, the interlude until yeah. the last hour. Yeah. So we could go on with the the next talk and then the, all the remaining hours 
will be doing exercises you can pick up the morning thing as well Hello, this is Lisa. Yeah. Um, there were lots of questions earlier about compiling and submitting jobs, just mm -hmm. general. Probably a good idea to just get an idea if everyone is now comfortable with this or yeah. if we should do any let, more. Let, let There's more you. open questions. So, yeah. So, okay. Let me show you one of the... So here is an example here, uh, batch script, right? This is like a basically a simplified way for you to do it. Um, if we're in today, dash, we, what, what I can explain what these means. First of all, you ask for one node. This is a batch script and you would prepare such, this file and then, then you do s batch, the script name, you do s batch space run all batch sh. It'll compile everything, it'll run everything, including your solutions. So this is the last uh, quick way of doing things. But then you can do your smaller exercises. And then you would, you would still ask for the, all these flags in, in your batch script, but then underneath that, you don't do run all. I'll show you what run all is, but then you can pick one thing to run using that run command. So let me first explain what these flags are. Um, ask for one node, as for dash, these are keywords, okay, you can keep those keywords. Then dash capital N meaning ask how many nodes, you say I want one node, you put dash capital C meaning I want what type of nodes, here we ask for CPU nodes, and on formula you could also ask for GPU if we, uh, we do GPU. So here is the CPU. And then little t ask for how many like minutes here, so this is 30 minutes. And then we have a reservation today, so you put in special flags dash dash reservation, and then you put in and the account, the reservation applies to N23 only. And outside the reservation after 4.30, you don't need these two lines. Um, and then they don't use your default um, project. You might belong to a regular project and they'll use, it all use that regular, regular project. If you only belong to N23, it'll still use N23. So, so these are the keywords of the, the batch script. You would ask batch, that batch script. Then let me show you what the run all in here is well not here is lots of lots of things um <laughs> so it uh, define my scratch you know for each of the executables you know copy things and i'll do the s run thing M mpi run is s run the actual s run command all these things so maybe i can show you a little easier way to do things here let me show you my I'm loading this directory. See if I have a team. I'm here. Crash course. Are you on the terminal? Oh, yeah, I forgot to show. I need to show the terminal now. <laughs> share. So here um, I am in my scratch here, and then I have this crash course supercomputing directory. Let me do this. So here, right, in this thing. So instead of doing run all or whatever, let me get a note first today. So I could do this as I want. S batch is for submitting a batch script and you wait in the queue. S alloc is to run an interactive batch session. So you get um, on a computer node and you can submit your job and see it interactively on a, on in, in your terminal. So let me do this C CPU dash T. 30 minutes dash dash reservation equals crown. Course dash A and three. So I immediately get a note because we have a reservation. Um, outside class recommended you use dash Q. I didn't even put a dash Q. Um, and you could add a dash Q interactive, which is very quick turnaround time. And now I'm um, I'm actually 
from a logging node right here. Uh, that logging 36, I was on a logging node. After this S alloc, I'm on a compute node now. Lid number blah blah is a, a compute node name. I'm on a compute node and I can, I can uh, let's go to C. Let's see. So all these um, example codes, just let's just use start dot c so what i do is i compile this is a regular way of compile a sequential code i compile my sequential code i can just run my dots i'm done but if i want to compile my mpi uh, code what i do is this mpi code does not need any special flags um, this, this is compiler wrapper. Um, we use little CC compiler wrapper for the C code, capital CC for C++ code, and FTM for Fortran code. And these wrappers knows where uh, your MPI include, li include files, it knows where your MPI libraries are. You don't need to say anything, even if you're trying to compile an MPI code. So you would compile that. And then um, you run it with however many MPI tasks you need. Um, um, the, the more standard way on our parameter with, with batch uh, script generator, and I'll tell you to do this batch C64, that's CPU bind those cores, uh, meaning on um, Parameter compute node, there are 256 total logical cores. I just mentioned basically 128 physical cores times two logical cores per core, physical core. So um, if you having one node total and running with little n, meaning four MPI tasks, you have 64 logical cores per task. This is what dash C specifies for. So you just put dash C64. It'll get much uh, best. Um, process, process thread affinity, just trust me with that. Uh, basically, we have number of MPI tasks this decided and you just put the dash C value as 256 divided by four there. So this is how you compile and run an MPI code. What about OpenMP? Um, and OpenMP, say, MP. Now for OpenMP, if you don't put any special flags, it'll actually compile it as a sequential code. Everything OpenMP is ignored. So for OpenMP, you have to add another uh, flag, F open, F OpenMP, now it's open, uh, OpenMP code. And then to run an OpenMP code, um, you just compile it. If you run it, darts.omp, it may or may not use number of threads. This is the way I should, the number of force option. If you don't say anything, so my code doesn't know how many threads it is. It might use one node, depending on compiler. It might use maximum number of, of thread that OS can give you. So anyway, so to be more explicit, uh, we usually do this OMP num thread. Especially I didn't have um, get num threads or set num threads class in my source code. So the, the way for this special code, specific, specific code is set num of threads. So you set that and then you run it. Or you can run it this way. Then I'm using the threads. So, and then for hybrid, it's basically the way you compile it is, do we have a hybrid? I think, yeah. As if you're compiling a pure MPI, an open MP code, because MPI part is already recognized. So you just compile it with, the same OpenMP flag, it, even if this code has MPI and OpenMP in it. And then to hybrid run, you would run it. Remember, no, notice for the OpenMP run, you don't have used, you didn't use S run, blah, blah, blah. It, it seems like you're running a sequential code A dot out itself. For the MPI one, remember we used S run, blah, blah, thing, right? So for hybrid run, you would use, actually you would use S run again, like that. It all, in this case, you'll be running with four MPI tasks and eight threads, because this one does, this one, you set it here, it doesn't stick. 
it all used the open MP uh, environment variable we said earlier, which is eight. But then you can you can set all MP number threads equals uh, 16, and then use the exactly same flag here because you still set dash C64 as like 64 logic calls available for each MPI task. And then you can use up to 64 of open MP threads for this same command. So I can use this for eight threads, I can use for 32 threads, I can use it to 30. It, it runs. And if I set it to 64, it runs. But if I say I want it bigger, it will complain. Hmm, why not? <laughs> should complain. And I forgot for each of these rounds to, to have best performance, you actually want crowd bottom up bind equals spread export OMP places for threads. This is a little bit more advanced of the affinity stuff, but then just we always set it um, as a standard and JavaScript generally I'll tell you about these. That's all. <laughs> okay.